morning, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Uh, today I happened to get this reading that kind of resonated with me. Um, I've been kind of on a soul searching path. Do I continue um, this Sangha or community that I built 10 years ago? Um, we've existed in a building for 10 years and before that the Yoga Nest operated within other institutions. And so as I approach that 10 year anniversary and celebration, I think it's in April, uh, I get thinking, do I want to continue this path? I feel like COVID kind of put a pause on what my vision was, but I'm craving it so much, the being with humans who are like-minded, sharing energy together, sharing yoga practice, the asana together, as well as the discussions. So interestingly enough, and I've been feeling kind of helpless with regards to so many things going on in the world right now. So today's reading could have come at a better time. Power in numbers sending our collective light to the world. Like tiny ripples that merge to form great waves, combined human intent is worth more than the sum of its parts. You may have seen this image that shows, um, you know, thousands or millions of monarch butterflies flapping their wings at the same time, and it can cause huge um, responses versus one person just flapping their wings. A single individual can initiate worldwide improvement by emitting conscious frequencies of love, beauty, goodness, and wisdom. And maybe if you don't believe in the invisible piece, the energy piece, maybe those, their acts of goodness can be seen. It's something tangible. And so maybe that resonates with you more than just energy. So if, if lots of people in a community or a group of people or a family all do good acts, it's seen the, uh, the response to their action and the good of their action is more visible than if I talk about energy. A group of people focusing their energy on sending light out to the planet can set the stage for positive global transformation. All of us possess the ability to channel love energy, to heal, to be a conduit for white light and to positively influence our fellow humans from afar. Even if you're feeling separate from people, you can always do this through uh, Facebook and daily acts in your own community. Yet one person can only do so much. Imagine if each of us took a few moments to start every day to send our light from our hearts to the world. Mother Earth would be quickly eased and the planet, as well as every organism on it, would be bathed in loving radiance. Someone shared a post yesterday that what would the world look like if every single person in every army around the world just quit? That idea that they are an or oracle or an instrument of, unfortunately, um, violence, even peacekeepers un ultimately have to eventually do something violent to keep the peace. Imagine if every single army person around the world quit at the same time. Who would carry out these leaders' opinions? Um, they even said, when you think about their leaders having a hissy fit, so think again of that collective shift from violence to peace if the people involved weren't doing it. Yet one person can only do so much. Imagine if we each took a few minutes of every day to send out light from our heart and then that would set the path and then the actions would be the uh, physical manifestation of what you were thinking of here. This would world would be an infinitely more beautiful place. You can bring about an earth where love triumphs over violence, air and water nourish in their purity, and people take pleasure in simply being alive. Alone, the light you emit is a wonderful healing tool. Be the change you want to be. Positivity and happiness is a choice. We all have that choice when we swing our legs off our bed first thing in the morning. Alone, the light you emit is a wonderful healing tool, but when you join with others to share your intent, you shine compassion and positive energy throughout the globe. And maybe it only starts in your own home with your pets, your family, uh, then your friends, then before you know it, you're part of a positive community. And I like to think Aurora, Newmarket, and Oak Ridges are like that. And some of you who live in other areas, I know you commit this in your own community. Inviting others to do this can be a beautiful thing if handled delicately. People might question the benefits of sending light to an already broken world. You might feel like it's falling on deaf ears. You will likely need to explain that each person's light joins together and through the joining, all are strengthened. When you think about it, a silk thread on its own is just like a piece of a web, but together collectively, silk threads woven into things supposedly are the strongest thing you could ever make. Same with spider webs, 
human hair, tiny, but woven together, collectively make an impossible to break substance. Assured then it's not the technique that's being used, the religion that's being practiced, the beliefs being held, but rather the intent that matters. As more people come in mindfulness to send their collective light to the world, the power of the planetary gift will increase exponentially. Again, keep thinking macro, micro, uh, what's happening in this part of your world that you have control over and what the response would be worldwide. You may already be affiliated with groups who would gladly participate in a noble project. Children who often feel incapable of influencing the world, yet are reservoirs of innate power, are usually enthusiastic about sharing their collective light, especially when they're excited about something. As you gather willing people together, your individual intent will become a great and powerful wave, and you will see results in your fellow humans, in the news, and in your daily life. So how can you fill your cup? How can we make change in so much darkness right now? We can make it starting here. We can make it then starting the people in our own lives. We can make it joining a group, like when we come together. And I am working on possibly doing uh, one morning class a week and one evening class a week. So I'm just kind of talking to some of my friends who work in the medical industry, if they feel it's safe or not. We definitely have had a lot of people new and current interested in an in-class, in-person class. Oh my gosh, so I just pulled an animal card. I got the lizard, core pose. If you think about it, a lizard is one of the most adoptable animals out there, as are humans. They can live in hot and cold climates. Some of them can change their skin color. They can eat whatever bugs come their way. They're not picky. Pay attention to your dreams and visions. So this one isn't necessarily about the tangible, oh my gosh, I almost opened it directly on the page. So lizard, I always think of as that pose we do, which is all core, all the front lines of the body. And this is more cerebral. There's a place on a conscious mind with the instinctual self that once identity is dissolved and you are, this is all very new age to me. And you are pure witness observing your experience from a completely detached perspective. This place is called dream time where all boundaries between self and others disappear. Oh, I do like that. There's that collective thought again. What remains is unadulterated awareness specific to you yet at the same time expanded to the universe. <clears throat> In this place that is at the very core of your experience, you also profoundly comprehend that you are simultaneously a body and something greater than a body. We are part of the collective. How did this tie in exactly to the other reading? I promise this is a coincidence. The dream time is a place where there's no sense of boundaries between your body and your surroundings. So thought and body working together. In this mystical, surreal state of pure experience, you're always guided and protected from the wise and angels inspiration of spirit. So the universe has got your back. Remember, we keep coming back to that. Your dreams and visions are the windows into this absolute reality. So watch your dreams closely and pay attention to your visions. Watch what you wish for. It could be a good thing. They will always guide you and lead you, and most especially at this time. As other associations, primal, ancient, reflexive, and spontaneous. I like that. So without further ado, I guess that means oh, we've got to do planks. We got to do um, lizard things that involve tightening up the front lines of the body and being focused. So we're going to do some work on the mat, our usual therapeutics, because I tell you when we don't do it, I can feel it. And then we will do some other physical movement to go along with what we talked about in here. So do get back to me, please, please, please write to me if you would be interested in coming to um, morning, evening or both. Um, I will offer it as the um, package monthly deal, but I would also offer drop-ins because some of you I know can't commit to doing your daily practice. So come to the mat, find your way down to this place of letting go. Pause. And then I'm going to open the arms a little wider and finally lay my head down. Let's take three breaths silently inside your head and use these breaths as the undoing. Remember that sensation you feel when you undo tight skates, maybe your bra, take off tight pants, tight jeans, that sensation of <sighs> starting now, inhaling through the nose.
Don't widen your knees. Keep your feet where they are and collect constructed rest. Just let the knees flop as far as they can to the right without lifting this left shoulder. You want to see where's that place that my body stops. The tension of my body, usually in the middle, it's my hips, will stop this action. Stay here for two breaths. Feel that stretch, that strain, that wanting to go all the way over, but something's holding you back. And come back to center. Anchor those shoulders, knees flop to the left. Oh, I'm barely moving and I can feel my resistance in my hips, lower back. Center, my feet are one or two fist width apart. Once more, knees flop to the right, slowly, purposely, with intention, looking for that edge where your body stops you. That tension is like a little diary of whatever you did yesterday. Back to center, upper body's glued, knees flop to the left, or they attempt to flop, but see what your range of motion is without you forcing it, you're going within your natural range of motion. Center, knees to the right, center, knees to the left, center. Do you notice your range of motion is expanding? As you're staying focused with that level of intent, our mind is nowhere else to go right now. Is the physical body finally letting go and you're able to go a little deeper into this very simple movement. Center. Now let's walk our heels closer to our bum. So we've changed the shape of our body just a little or walk your bum to your heels and now try to go left. Oh, it's a totally different experience. Center. Now try to go right. Center. Once more to the left. Now in this tight, restrained variation. This time as the knees are to the left, let your head roll to the right. Center. Knees to the right, head to the left. Center, one more time. Knees to the left, head fully turned to the right if your neck is comfortable. My right ear comes to the mat and close your eyes. Acknowledge any resistance or tension in the body. Center, knees to the right, head to the left. And center. Keep your knees, or actually keep your feet, get them come, the <laughs> soles of the feet together. Can you do it without looking? Toe pads line up, arches are wide, heels line up, and then let your knees fall wide. So now we're in reclined cobbler, reclined bound angle. My arms are almost to a T. We're gonna take three breaths here. Knuckles heavy, fingers curled. So you feel the flesh of the arms pressing into the mat as gravity opens up the front lines of your body. Three breaths inside your head. your legs. We're not moving the arms. Gently bring left thigh to chest then right. No hands and rock side to side. Little boat. Massaging the lower back. You don't have to go very far. I think of gently twisting a towel or a cup of grinder. 
Now we're going to make this a little more intentional. Feet are going to flex, press those arches and toe pads together, press the thighs, knees, engage the core and let the knees twist slightly to the left, but the right shoulder stays down. And now that level of resistance is coming up the spine. It's taken out of the hips. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling up the side body, upper back. Back to center. Don't let the legs separate. Knees twist towards the right. Left shoulder stays heavy. Feel the resistance. Where's your body holding it? Center. Slowly, mindfully twisting to the left. Notice if your range of motion is expanding. Back to center. Twist to the right. Center. Now we're going to make it a little more intense. So knees are going to twist to the left. Flex. Pick up your head and turn and look to the right. Keep the upper body glued down. How far can you go without falling? And acknowledge the tension in your body. Center. <sighs> Last one, we're waking up the core and the pecs. Knees to the right, head to the left. Back to center. And this time you can take your hands to your knees, pulling them as deeply as you like and rocking center, center, side, side, little boat. Let's take our knees to the floor on the left, double leg spinal twist, right arm open to a T. Two breaths here, deep inside your head, really focus on the weight of that right shoulder coming to the mat. Back to center, take those knees to the floor on the right. Right hand can help that stack deepen, left arm open to a T. Faces to the ceiling as if the sun was looking at you, or let your head roll to the left. Two breaths inside your head. Back to center, hands to knees, little boat. Now we're going to keep the right leg in, left foot in the air, point and flex a few times. Fan at the toes, roll out your ankle. Slowly lower that flexed left leg down. Again, with purpose and attention. When I focus on the muscle and the leg that's doing its work, my mind is there. It's just another form of moving meditation. Flex the feet, pulling right leg in. If it hurts your knees, you're coming behind the thigh instead. Left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. Left leg in, right leg slide straight. Oh, sorry, keep that right foot in the air, point and flex, roll out the ankle, fan the toes. Drawing that left thigh in. Right hand takes left knee over, single leg spinal twist, keep that left shoulder down. Two more breaths. Back to center. Little boat. Let's take the knees wide for a moment. And I'm gonna hold the knees, ankles are gonna dangle. Let's take two breaths here, eyes closed. On the exhale, can you feel the hips getting a little wider? A less aggressive version, almost of tree pose. Sorry, a frog pose, upside down. And then coming to the setup for happy baby, hands behind the thighs. Coming to the setup for happy baby, or coming into full happy baby. Make the shape, but don't default to rocking. 
option to stay here or rocking side to side. Coming back to center, soles together, binding if that's possible. And then feet to the mat, knees out to the side, hands massaging hip flexors or resting on your belly. And then coming into cactus arms or recline goddess. Close the knees. The arms will stay in goddess or cactus, feet in the air. And let's once more point and flex, roll up the ankles. Legs wide. I'm gonna hold the inner knees so that this isn't too strenuous on the inner thighs. Close your eyes and let's take two breaths here. Close the legs, knees to chest, quick shoelace right over left, line up the knees, grab the opposing ankles, flex, and switch left over right, shake it out and roll into a ball on your side, take a pause, and then coming all the way up. I want you to take a block or a book or a pillow. Let's take it on its side so that when we do child's pose, we have somewhere to rest our forehead. So it's less work. Forehead, actually I'm gonna come into sphinx in a child's pose, then take my forehead down. And if this does not make you dizzy, let's take five breaths here. A deep inhale, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. On the exhale, we're attempting to press tailbone and bum closer towards the heel. Inhale three, exhale. Inhale four, Exhale. Inhale five. Exhale. Now let's take this a little deeper. Let's move that block further away. Arm to the width of the shoulder, possibly forehead to mat. Three breaths in extended child's pose. And I have naturally opened my knees a little to create space so that I can sink a little deeper. Three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. This time palms are down, elbows lift, push the mat away. Exhale, option to try to bring your chest to the floor, look forward, and come on out. I don't know about you, but I felt that in my upper back. We're gonna do a quick dolphin, because we're here, we've got the block. Coming back into those sphinx arms. I'm on my knees, so I might come forward and back a few times, if that feels good. I'm tucking my feet, because that feels good. Whew. Now, Elbows stay down, toes tucked. I'm gonna lift my, I'm gonna press the forearms down. So we're rooting to rise in two places, three places. Palm, forearm, elbow, and toes. And I'm barely lifting my knees one inch, look forward. Two breaths, inhale one. Exhale, if it hurts to look forward, let your head drop. Inhale two. Exhale, knees down, untuck, extended child's pose. Let's take this a little further or do what we just did. Forearms and palms root down, toes root down, knees lift. Option to come into full short downward dog. You're in a dolphin 
with your forearms down, option to look forward or to the mat between the elbows. Option to walk those legs in. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale, come back to extended child's pose. And I can feel a lot of tension in my upper back. Change of habits over the last two years, more desk work, less asana yoga. Um, what I'm doing there is I wanted you to prepare for when we come into lizard. All of this so far has been in tight. Can you come into um, cactus arms and open and come back close? Let's do that a couple times, prepping our body to eventually hold that lizard pose a little longer. So, cactus arms, flex, opening around. Imagine again, there's a pole behind me, opening, 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 close, close, close. Opening, 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 close, close, close. And actually these are almost like our wings. Opening, 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 close, close, close. One more time, opening, close. Another action that we often will do with the arms if we were gonna go into wheel or full upward bow is those same arms, but now I'm gonna lift them up. Oh my gosh, and come back down, keeping them aligned. <laughs> this is so tight. Flex, and I'm imagining I'm gonna go into a back bend, but it's not gonna happen. I'm just setting the shoulders up. And one more time, flex, and come back. Shake it out. Let's heat up our hands and give our shoulders a little massage. So you're gonna heat up your hands, and then we're gonna take a handful of our shoulder flesh and pinch and release, almost like you're making bread. Oh. Guess what? We're ready to do our lizard. So coming onto the mat once more into tabletop, have my block handy, as if I was gonna do a dolphin. This is kind of a generalized standard to keep the width of the shoulder girdle stable. You might have smaller shoulders. I have wider shoulders. I wish there was a wider block. I'm gonna come into the setup for dolphin. And instead of coming to dolphin, I'm gonna step back and do a low plank. Step back left, then right. Can you maintain this? Notice my butt is not in the air. Engage the core, squeeze the thighs together. Press that block to center, and they're not gonna hold it for very long. That was a low plank or half plank. Some call it a military plank. You'll see some people do it this way too. Palms together, step back, low. The belly doesn't drop, the butt doesn't go in the air. There's that perfect middle ground. And that involves, involves that muscular energy of pushing everything to center to this area. Let's come into Sphinx. So they're not as much work. I'm gonna come on my belly, hands into sphinx, elbows under shoulders. I like to take my feet a little bit wider than when we normally are doing a back bend. And I'm gonna tuck my toes, it just feels good. I'm just tucking my big toe for a moment. Actually, it's creating, I don't think I'll cramps. I've done too much walking on pavement. So, lizard. You're either in Sphinx, staying here, is this good enough? Or tuck and rise, come back down. You can widen your legs a little. Now my feet are wider than the mat. I can stay in Sphinx. Now it's a back bend heart opener. Or adding a little bit of muscular effort if you are super into core. Engage the core, tighten the glutes, and come into lizard. Nice work. And then to come out, we're gonna stack our hands, forehead to hands, Bend your knees and windshield wiper. So, clearly, I didn't keep you there very long. Some of you are very attracted to core. Some of you like the peaceful movement. And I was thinking about it as I was doing our floor work that I was beating myself up trying to keep the core people happy all this time. Yoga is not a workout of the body. It's actually a workout of the mind and the heart. Our body becomes the instrument with which we reflect all that we're doing. 
So if you're looking for a workout class, there are so many free ones online. The one thing this period of COVID has taught me is that I need to take care of this and this more than this. <laughs> so, oh, what's this one? We've never had this card. Today's beautiful love notes. I trust my inner ding. <laughs> what's that? You were born with an inner knowing, <clears throat> that intuition. Some talk about the third eye. Some talk about the second brain and the stomach. What Louise calls your inner ding, listen to it and let it guide your actions. So the more we practice, we again are using our body as an instrument to reflect what's going on in our mind and our heart. Listen to that. If your body sends you physical signals instead of intellectual signals, honor them. If your body gives you a spidey sense of something being good or bad for you, listen to it. You are your own teacher. And you're also a culmination of all the teachers throughout your life. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.